In this video, we are going to accelerate a function with pink. The function we're going to accelerate is the finite impulse response filter. To start things off, we're going to test or benchmark the function in Python. Then we're going to design an overlay in Vivado with the accelerator IP. Then we're going to test the hardware accelerator in Python. And then finally, we're going to create a driver for that accelerator. So I'm going to start things off by powering up my pink Z1 board. I'm going to connect it up to the network. And I'm going to plug in the USB cable so that it has power. Then I'm going to turn it on and wait for Linux to boot up. And once Linux boots up, the LED is going to flash. And that's how I know that it's ready to run. So now that it's running, I can open up my web browser, type in pink colon 1990 to get into the Jupyter web server. Now on my pink board, okay, we've got to type in the password, which is Xilinx. Now on my zinc board, on my pink board, I've got a notebook called FIR acceleration on pink. Now I'll make that available on the blog. So just open that. Now what we are going to do this, the first block of code here is just a plot function. So it's going to help me to plot the signals that I'm dealing with in this notebook. Then the second block of code that's going to generate my noisy input signal. That's what we're going to use as an input to the FIR filter. So there is a view of the signal that we're going to use or a part of it. And then finally, this block here is using the SciPy L filter function to run a FIR filter using the coefficients that I've specified there. And the result is going to be plotted. As you can see, the, the filter works. Uh, I get rid of that noise there. So now what I want to do is try and speed that up. It run in 0.1 or a tenth of a second. We want to speed that up. So I'm going to open, I'm going to create a Vivado project for this. So I'm going to put it into some location, call it project one, and it doesn't really matter what we call it. It's an RTL project. Now here I want to specify the pink Z1 board. and click finish. So now we are lucky that an FIR function can be accelerated with an IP core that's free and that's provided by Xilinx in the IP catalog. I'm going to start things off by creating a block diagram and putting the first the zinc processing system into the block diagram. Then I'm going to run the block automation, which is going to apply the board preset. So now my PS will be properly configured for the pink Z1 board. Now I'm going to click add IP and I'm going to add my FIR filter or FIR compiler IP. So that's a free IP. And that's what we're going to use to accelerate our filter function in Python. So we just have to configure it properly because we're going to push the input signal through this IP core using a DMA, using the AXI DMA. So this core is going to have to have a AXI streaming interface. So the first thing here, actually, I'm going to put in the, co the coefficients of the filter. The coefficients for this filter I've got from this website here. I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of the video. You just have to copy and paste the coefficients out of there and put them into your IP customization. So now in channel specification, I have to go down. Now I'm basically going to configure here a sampling clock of 100 megahertz. And I want the IP core to take in every sample that I give it. So the DMA is going to push in our data, which is already the samples. We don't want this core to be sampling the input data. We want it to take in every sample that we give it. So the next thing is 
I want it to have a width of 32 bits and I want it to have an output width of 32 bits as well. So I'm going to have to use a rounding mode because if I use full precision, the output width will be larger than the input width. So I'm going to choose non-symmetric rounding up as a rounding mode and I'm going to specify the output width as 32 bits. So now my input and my output are 32 bits. Now the interface is important because I'm going to hook it up to the DMA, to the Axi DMA, which requires uh, a T last signal. So that's why I have to make sure that T last is enabled. And secondly, it's also going to need the T ready signal, which is kind of like a valid signal. So I have to enable those two things. And now we're right to connect this IP to the Axi DMA core. So I'm going to click OK. And now what I can do is add my Axi DMA to the block diagram. Now I'm going to have to configure it. So I double click on it. Now I'm going to disable scattergather engine because that's not supported by pink anyway, or at this time it's not anyway. I'm going to maximize the width of buffer length register. So this is what determines the maximum DMA transfer size. You know, set that to 23. Now the rest of it shows that I have a, an input and output width of 32 bits. That's exactly what I want. That's what I set my FIR filter to. So I click OK. Now it's ready to hook up. So I'm just going to drag the fear compiler next to it so it's easier to see. Now I'm going to hook the output of the FIR filter to the input of the DMA. Now these are the Axi streaming interfaces. I'm going to connect the streaming output of the DMA to the streaming input of the FIR filter. Now for the rest of the connections, uh, I've got to actually first enable a high performance port to the DDR because my DD, my DMA action is going to need to access the DDR. So I open this up. I click on the high performance Axi slave ports and I enable one of them. So that that's going to allow me to connect the DMA through to the DDR. Now I can use the connection automation feature. I'm going to check that. So this is going to connect the Axi light of the DMA to the general purpose Axi interface. It's going to connect the clock of the FIR to the F to the fabric clock zero, which is good, 100 megahertz. And it's going to connect the high performance port to one of the memory map ports of the DMA. So that's all correct. That's exactly what I, what I want. But there are two memory, memory mapped ports of the Axi DMA. So I have to run it again. So now I just look at the design. I can see it's added a processor system reset. For my resets, it's connected to the 100 megahertz fabric clock zero. It's got an Axi interconnect for the peripherals and an Axi smart connect for interface with the high performance port to the DDR. Now my DMA, what I'm going to do now is just name these a little bit better because I'm going to have to use these names or refer to these names in Python. So I'm going to call the DMA FIR underscore DMA and I'm going to call the FIR filter just FIR. Another thing I'm going to do to make things nicer in Python is I'm going to bring these two IPs together into a hierarchy. I'm going to call the hierarchy filter. So that basically is going to group them together into one block. And in Python, in pink, I'm going to be referring to everything through this filter hierarchy. It's just going to make things a little bit more ordered in in Python when I have to use it later.
So now the block design is done. I can save it. Then the next thing I have to do is generate a HDL wrapper. So I right click on the design and I create a HDL wrapper. Let Vivado manage it. So now that that's done, all I need to do is generate the bitstream. And then once that bitstream is generated, what I have to do is export the block design to a TCL file. This TCL file is going to be part of my overlay. It's required by, by pink. So pink, when you open the overlay, in pink in Python, the pink library is going to read this TCL file and interpret our block design or our hardware design. So now I'm just going to copy the files and put them together and send them over to my pink Z1 board. So I'm going to copy that bitstream, put it together with a .tcl file call them the same name, which I'm going to call FIR underscore Axel. And then I'm going to open up my pink Z1 board over the network. And I'm going to copy these files into the pink overlays folder. So I'm going to create a new folder here called FIR underscore Axel and copy the overlay files into this folder. That's all I need to do to get my overlay onto the board. So now that it's on the board, I can continue with the notebook. So the next code blocks of the notebook are going to load the overlay that I just copied onto the board and they are going, this next block of code is just setting up the DMA transfer. So it's going to transfer my samples into the FIR filter and receive what comes out of the FIR filter. It's all going to go from memory through the filter and back into the memory. And then here's the result. And I can see it took 0 0.003 seconds. So that's three milliseconds. So we did get an acceleration of that algorithm. So now we've got here uh, the code for the driver of the Fear Accelerator because the code that we had before, we, we'd like to hide that code from the user so that, that it, the user can just have a simple function. So now uh, that code has been turned into just one line and we see that the result is good.